Hey guys, Chris here from Kite Republic. We are here today to chat life on tour through COVID, tricks and tips to help you up your game. And also we answer all of the questions you've sent in over the last few days. We're catching up today with Big Wave Frother, current world kite surf tour leader, local Melbourne boy, Mr. James Carrow. Let's get him on the line. Mr. Carrow, how are you, mate? Hey, mate, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, good. What do we got, like seven, eight in the morning, something like that? Uh, yeah, it's 8 a.m. I'm impressed. Early start, or have you already had a wave? <laughs> no, I just woke up. It's still yeah. dark outside here. Nice one, mate. Not even sunrise. Not even sunrise? No. I'm, Crazy. I'm very impressed. You must have been excited for this chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, mate. Excellent, excellent. Now, before we even start, I've got to ask you, how long have you been traveling for a living now? Um, I mean, for a living, I mean, well, like two years full on, I guess. Yeah. But um, I haven't been home now for since February. Okay. So a couple of years of traveling for a living, haven't been home since February. How are your time zone conversions going? I'm pretty good, actually. I don't really get um, jet lag so much ever, really. No, I just mean knowing, you know, what time it is at home no and idea. what day it is. No idea. So I'm gonna, I'm I just, just gonna, I'm gonna read. No picks up then. I'm gonna read a little message that I got yesterday that definitely had me on my toes, going, "What have I done here?" So, uh, hey, mate, give me ten minutes. Oh, actually, oh, it's not Monday. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I was very impressed. It uh, definitely had me second guessing for a little bit there. <laughs> I was uh, just woke up. I was, I was getting ready to go kite. It was windy. And I was nice. like, making, making a coffee. I totally understand fun. then, mate. I've got to call Chris. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. So just to really rub it in, which epic beach or kite spot are you currently based at? So I'm in Tarifa, so Balneario is pretty much where I'm kiting every day now. I don't know if, if many people know, but it's like an offshore. It's not very big, but it's offshore, um, like a big wave, big, big airport. Yeah, nice. It gets really windy, so it's sick. Yeah, what's, what's your pick? What's your favourite for your directions? You a Levante man or waiting for the Poniente? I'm a Levante man. Today nice. it's like 35. It's going to be It's going to be full power. Oh sick. yes, you beauty. Very Sweet. Sick. And um, so, mate, give us a little bit of a, a picture of your year, because obviously it all it all started back in February. You took out Cape Verde, and and as such, the the current world tour leader. And uh, no no mean feat, I might add. I mean, geez, you've got Mitu, Ayrton, Machu, three of like the kiters that have dominated the last five years of uh, directional competition. So on their home break, well done. Uh, that uh, normally you'd be, what, Germany, Tarifa, Mauritius, Morocco, Brazil. That would have yeah. been your competition stretch. So what, what have you been up to? Yeah, so, I mean, it's been a little bit boring. Competition-wise, I've been missing it. But, um, I mean, during kind of my quarantine phase, I was in Brazil. And I was in Brazil for a few months, like six months or something. So I was there for a long stretch. But during the kind of quarantine phase, I was just surfing every day by myself. No one around, you know. It was perfect. I was living on the beach. Yeah, it was, it was like the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was perfect, you know. And then after quarantine, we went up to Kambuka, had some kiting, and then uh, ever since, I've just been training. I'm here in Tarifa now. I might go to Portugal. Don't know. Sounds rough. Whatever happens. Those sort of decisions are hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for, you, for you on that side of the world at the moment, if you are moving between countries or doing anything like that, is it sort of business as normal or do you have to get to the country um, and then quarantine or what? No. So coming from Brazil was pretty tricky. We had to get a lot of letters and a lot of, a lot of talking to people before we, we thought we could come. And then, and then there was more and more, it was, it was a mission, but um, traveling within Europe is generally okay. There's some rules, some countries you can't go to. Mm -hmm. um but maybe you have to have a test when you get there or something like that but um yeah. i mean there's always a way yeah if you need to go you need to go if the weather's coming in you've got to get to a certain yeah. spot there's a way 
Jeg ser også igen med kravet bare på hver os ikke. Very nice, mate. Very nice. So obviously you uh, you missed the competition stretch. Or are there are there any more competitions for you now for the year, or is that it? Um, no. So we had the distance battle, and then that's it. There's maybe there's a few national sort of little competitions I'll, I'll enter in, but um, nothing nothing world tour based. Okay. So does does this mean yeah. we can we can officially you know wrap the year up and uh, and this is James's first world title or uh, what's the go? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about <laughs> the title. I've heard a few things, but I'm not really sure if they're going to crown or if they're not. You know, because it's a little weird. It's only one event. Um, yeah. But it's it's completely up to them. And and hey, it was pretty unfair. I mean, look, it was their home. It was their home turf. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nice one, mate. Well, we've got our fingers crossed hearing that now. I wasn't sure yeah, if they were going to throw you. any other events in, so uh, that'll be interesting. It's going, to be, um, it's going to be special. Indeed, indeed. And uh, you just mentioned a second ago the distance battle. I'm still trying to get my head around it because it looked like everyone was in the same spot competing, but there were two screens and it was being filmed yeah. and then commentated later apart. Like, what, what was the event and how, how was it as a feeling, like as a competitor? It must um, be tough not having someone to compete against. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on, on the live stream, it was very quick, but we had, um, I think it was two months to film. So, had two months, you could pick the best day and kind of film three heats we had to film. Yeah. Um, but it was like, we film a five minute long raw video mm -hmm. and then we send it to them. But in the video, we have to do the, the tricks. So we have to do five tricks, I think it was. Yeah. Five or four tricks. Um, but yeah, it was, for me, it was difficult because there's no one around. There's no vibes, there's no, no one pushing you, you know? Yeah. It was weird. I couldn't, I couldn't really get my head into it fully. It was so, strange. It's a very interesting concept for if, you know, if lockdowns were to continue and if this was to continue to be able to have two people at different spots, like sending in films yeah. and then having commentating like with the two screens up and like it could have been, you know, it must be so weird as a competitor, but it's kind of a cool concept. Like it's, it goes both ways, I guess. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if it really comes down and gets refined and done really, really well, it could be epic. Like we could have anything ever happen and wherever the competitors are, they film a video and there's a competition. Like yeah. it's, it's a really cool concept. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I'm um, not going to ask too many more on tour because I, I know that I've got some questions for you from, uh, from people that have sent in and I've also got some uh, trick and tip questions. So I'll, uh, Make one final uh, little stretch now while we're on the, t on the tour and the team bit. Obviously, um, you know, your, your teammates at the moment, you've got the top five places in the men's are all uh, Duotone, uh, Duotone Ion Riders. The top of the women's is currently a, a Duotone Ion Rider. What is it about? <laughs> is it the team atmosphere? Is it the gear? Is it a combination? Like... They're dominating this field at the moment. Oh, I mean, it's definitely a combination of kind of the gear and, and the team because, I mean, for me, I feel very open. You know, I feel like if I didn't want to compete, I'd, I'd do something else, you know. But yeah. the guys that want to compete really want to compete. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're on, like, the best gear they could possibly be on. So it, it helps. Like, it really helps. Like... I mean, the kite, I know the kite that I have, the Neo, is, is the most well-rounded kite they could possibly have because it's yeah. a machine in the waves and then it's also a machine at jumping big, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a hard thing to make. So the gear is definitely, definitely helping also. Mm -hmm. and, and how much, like, in a year, obviously, as I said, the top five riders in the world currently are all a part of your team, like, how often do you guys get to hang out? Like we said, you know, I've seen well, yourself, one of them and, and other juniors coming through in time with, that are there with others pushing them. And, and the, the rate you learn so much more when you've got someone else there trying to yeah. push you as well. How often do you guys get to hang out and do that? Um, I mean, quite a lot, to be honest. I'm, I'm here with Machu now. Ayrton was here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Brazil 
Well, I mean, I actually didn't see anybody in Brazil because it was quarantined. But <laughs> usual times, we're together quite a bit because we compete. And then I travel with, I don't know, I'll probably travel with Pedro or I'll travel with Sebastian, you know. So yeah. I'm kind of myself, I'm, I'm more or less always with someone training or yeah, pushing same. myself with them. So it definitely helps for sure because it's like a little competition every time you go in the water. If you see someone do something you can't do, it's like, oh, what's this? I'm going to do it. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And yeah, really <laughs> once someone's done awesome. it, I'm not letting that one pass before I've nailed it too. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to do it better. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. And um, I don't know if you can see it. On the on the TV behind me, I've got a couple of photos of you just buried in waves uh, yeah. almost uh, over time. Oh, and sick. Obviously, since you were a, since you were a, a Grom, and, and might I add, you're massive now, but you were a, you were a Grom like there for yeah, a while. Right. Uh, um, you were, you know, you were out there at Bells chasing the biggest waves you could. You were on every big wave there was. What is it that you're thinking and, and how is it that you get to the stage that, you know, when you put yourself in those sort of situations, what are you chasing? What's the, what's the thought going on there? I don't know. I couldn't explain it. It's just uh, I want to go big all the time. And if I see a big wave coming, it just... It draws me in. <laughs> it sucks me in. <laughs> nice. But um, I don't know. Those, those uh, for me, those days when um, it's a big wave or it's really windy or like it's really it's a heavy day, you know. And um, most people are kind of on the beach. They want to watch. I want to be out there. I don't want to be on the beach. I don't. Ne- I, don't mate, want to be I want to be in it. I've never seen you standing on a beach, and I've seen you on beach <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Nah, not really. I don't like standing and watching. I like to, um, ex- on those days, especially, it kind of, it motivates me to be out there. And especially if I'm alone out there, I love it. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, obviously, I mean, you're, you're traveling the world, chasing waves and, uh, you know, competition as well. But I mean, I know from watching you come through and the things you're into, you're obviously, it's that next wave that you're out there trying to chase yeah. and, and do that. What's the, I mean, it's an exciting way to be, to travel and an exciting thing to be doing. Do you do you, do you sort of pinch cool. yourself at times and go, "Yep, this is me. This is what I'm doing." Like, yeah, sometimes it's a bit surreal, you know. Sometimes, like, um, I don't know, something will happen and and it feels really special to me, and I'll 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 pinch myself and I'll have to sit for a moment and and really understand what's happening around me, and yeah. it's really cool. I get a lot of moments like that actually. I really appreciate it. Nice. Well, it's uh, it's cool to be watching, even from uh, being locked up here within our five k's or uh, twenty. Sorry, twenty five yeah. k's as of yesterday. It's still cool to be uh, watching Jeez. and seeing the pics of you, man. Love following it. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. So moving on to gear setup, we're going to a little, just a little tricks and tips. One on gear, one on strapless, and one on waves. So. Gear setup wise, the World Tour, obviously it's a combo of uh, pure wave riding and also the strapless freestyle side. So for yeah. you, what are you looking for in your kite, in the way you trim it, in the power levels for pure wave riding? And what are you looking at for the strapless freestyle side? Yeah. Um, so uh, for me, all right. So I pretty much ride the Neo for everything, to be honest. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm more or less on the Neo nine times out of 10. But in the waves, I'm definitely looking for something that I can, that has a lot of power so I can use a smaller kite Mm -hmm. and is also very quick because, you know, sometimes when you're in the waves, you need to get out of there and you need to move really quick. Mm -hmm. And um, so something that's reactive, but also something more, more important than anything. When you're going downwind, you can, you can really trust the kite that it's not going to fall out of the sky. Mm-hmm. It's going to drift and it's not going to be pulling you like crazy. So when you're going down the line, you can just ride the wave and really do what you want to do on the wave rather than what the kite is allowing you to do. Yeah. And so for that one there, I think it's a really good one for your thoughts, sort of watching into intermediate riders on the beaches around you and you watching others, you know, chasing waves and that. Do you feel that most people are riding the wave itself or most people are sort of 
on the wave, but they're getting yanked around by their kites. Like it, it's a really different yeah. look when I watch someone like you actually surfing with this thing out in front of you that you're trying not to use. Like, yeah, I mean, for sure, not 90% of people ride just with the kite pulling themselves around. But mm. I think it's a very hard thing to, to ride without having the kite decide what you do. Because it, I mean, it's very hard on a good day, you know, to just ride the wave how you want to ride it. <laughs> but um, I think the kite has a really, really big play in that also because if you have the wrong kite for what you're trying to do and you want to drift, the kite's going to fall out of the sky. And then if you turn it too quick, it's going to have too much power and it's going to pull you way too hard at the section. Yeah. So I think the equipment you choose to ride really defines how you can ride a wave. Yeah. Nice one. And then um, I guess going to the complete other side of your spectrum with the, the strapless freestyle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the strapless freestyle. So how do you set that up? So, what are you looking for? So, I mean, I just want to be fully powered all the time. <laughs> as the hardest bar pressure I possibly can. <laughs> so I ride my knee on the hard setting. Um, I take my lines. I put 20, 20 meter lines on or 22 meter. I think it is now. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a 22 meter line. So I have the, the, the medium bar and I just take the extensions off the end. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's 22 meters and it actually feels really good. And I take the, the V, you know, the V yeah. distributor, I yeah. take it off. Yeah, so it splits from the so, bottom. Yeah, it splits from the bottom. It gives you much more bar pressure. Um, it pulls you a lot more and, and you can't ride as powered up with the kite. You have to depower it a lot more because Otherwise, it doesn't fly the same. But for me, it jumps a lot, a lot more. It kite loops better, and and when you when you're doing strapless freestyle, you're really powered all the time. Um, it helps because to keep the board on your feet in the air, and when especially when it's a little bit lighter and it's not super windy, you need really need to have that that pressure in the kite to to um be able to to create the the pressure against the the wind yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense and so you mentioned there that for the strapless freestyle you go down to 22 meter lines what are you riding in the waves um so i'm i'm happy riding 24 meters in the waves um if it's onshore it's a little better if it's anything onshore 24 meters is a little better mm -hmm. because your kite can can drop a little bit further can drift a little bit further um, if it's offshore, I would definitely ride 20 meter lines or 22, mm -hmm. just because you get a lot of sort of pops in your kite and, and your kite drifts up and down a little bit, yeah. just naturally. Um, but that reduces all the pops and the little drifts. So the kite's a lot more stable. Um, but more or less, they're both uh, 24 meter or 22 meter is, is pretty good. Yeah. Probably get the uh, get caught a few more times with the twenty two meters on the kite loops. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a lot easier to catch yourself. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, all right, a wave and a strapless freestyle question before we go to the uh, the the right ins. Um, firstly, based on the common traits you see on the water, if you could offer one piece of advice to an intermediate wave rider, if they practiced it, could help them step their game up. What would it be? Oh. It's a tough one. What's the most common oh. thing you see and you go, come on, you can do that better? I see most. All right. So a general thing, I see most people going way too fast. Yep. They're, they're going way past the wave. They're turning kind of past the pocket and, and um, out in the flats. And um, I think if most people slow down on the wave, maybe it's because some people are scared. They're not used to riding waves. But um, if you're in a little wave, the wave's not going to hurt you. So go slow. Really try and use the wave as your power source, not the kite. And if you go slow, it kind of forces you to, to turn in the pocket and really understand the mechanics of the wave rather than just pulling yourself down the line. Yeah, I mean, thinking about it, I, I don't believe I've ever seen anyone fall out the back of a wave that they've been trying to wait to ride. Whereas you see yeah. everyone shoot out the front, like everyone. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's everyone. exceptional advice and something that'll mean people turn into wave riders rather than kiters that are sort of out in the flats there, sort of in the waves sometimes. 
that's uh that's yeah i mean awesome. it's a very simple thing and and most people don't really realize that they're going too fast but i think the majority of people go just i mean it's it's normal because you have so much power in the car when you're on a wave you just fly you go so fast if you pull yeah. the bar and you just fly so nice. just, just release the bar and really use the, the wave as as the power source Perfect. And uh, I'm just going to say, you look, you sounded so shocked and like you had no idea what you were going to say then, but that was probably the best answer I've ever heard. So I will take it up. Huh? Never had that question. <laughs> <laughs> First time. Nice one. So um, on the, on the other side of things, the strapless airs. Firstly, yeah. what tips would you give to someone struggling to keep the board on their feet as they take off? What's going to help them with that? Okay, so for me, the biggest thing that I realized kind of learning strapless, because mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't been doing it, I've only been doing it for three years, really. Um, so the biggest thing for me was a big learning curve. You have to really, it's, it's kind of all on your front foot, really. It's all like balancing the board on your front foot. So you really have to pull your knee to your chest like this. Don't like, don't just bend your knee pull it to your chest and kind of all your tricks you have to pull this knee this front knee to your chest all the time mm -hmm. and the, the more that you can do that the more kind of you get used to that the more you'll have your board and obviously you have to point it upwind into the wind to to have the pressure of the wind under the board but yeah. if you can pull that knee to your chest really quick then it allows you to get the movement in the board and get the kind of angle into the wind and i mean if the board's closer to you then you have a lot more control over the board so are you you obviously said just then riding into the wind and i think that 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 knee up thing is going to if people can focus on that help enormously when you're taking off are you basically taking off with the same sort of load that you would with a twin tip sort of that load and pop or are you pretty much riding it almost into the wind and then lifting continued up in that one scoop motion. What's the feeling for you at takeoff? I'm sure you don't think about um, it that often, but. <laughs> no, so it's it's pretty impossible to generate as much force on a surfboard as you can on a twin tip. So kind of the way we get around that is is we edge we edge really hard, but at the start you don't have to edge so hard. You can, you can ride more on top of the board and kind of edge a little bit, but more turning into the wind. Mm -hmm. And then as you kind of get that last little, it's a quick turn. It's like a, a, a chop up wind. But um, yeah. as, you're, as you're about to leave the water, you do like a little ollie, mm -hmm. like a, just like a skateboard ollie. Yeah. And then instead of kind of pushing the board back to the water, you let it come up to you and then you bend that front knee, pointing, it, pointing the board into the wind. Mm -hmm. upwind so you you're coming along you do your upwind upwind little chop and then you do like an ollie into the wind yeah so you're almost and trying to get that that air that the wind coming in you're almost trying to get that wind under the nose and to and to stick it to you as straight yeah. away off the water there yeah that, yeah yeah so if you imagine the, the, the closer you pull your you can get the board to your body the more wind is going to be underneath the board yeah. So if you do that little ollie and then pull your your knee up, you'll be sorted. Just, <laughs> just stick it. It's some super glue. Nice, awesome. And so you've you've edged in. You've you've got that front knee up. You've taken off. How are you going to keep that board stuck to your feet for the landing and throughout the the air of time? So the easiest way to do it to keep the board and your feet for longer is get the board above your head. Keep the board above like, your head? Yeah, like pendulum under the board. So if you, this is like the first trick that I would teach someone. Mm -hmm. If you picture, like if you've ever seen someone doing a hand drag with a twin tip in the air. Yep, makes sense. So if you do a jump and then you get the board, you don't have to get it above your head, but level is, with you is okay as well but just pushing it into the wind like that, because if the board's above your head or level with you, your kind of head level, then it's not going to fall down. It's mm -hmm. just pushing against the wind and then you hold the bar in. You don't have to do anything with the kite. 
And then when you come down, you release the bar and it'll drop your board. Mm -hmm. And then naturally you'll follow your board and the landing might, might take a few turns, but you'll get used to it. And then you'll, you'll start landing on your back foot. But kind of as you do the ollie and you, you bend that front knee in, you pull the bar in and then try and it's, it's strange. It's not, it's not a push with the board because if you push the board, then you, you lose the board. You can't ever really push the surfboard in the air. Mm -hmm. It's more of a kind of using, if, imagine if you had your hand on the floor and you want it on the sand, you had your hand on the sand mm -hmm. and you want to push the sand to the left. You just slide your hand along the sand. Mm -hmm. But if you do that on the, on the pad, when your board is getting pushed against you, it's going to move the board. And that's how you move the board. You don't push against the board. You just slide your foot and it, and it brings the board with it. Yeah. Cause if you have the pressure against the board, the, the board will, will follow your foot. Nice. Makes sense. And, uh, I think quite a few people are probably going to be listening to this and listening to that bit over and over as they're doing their session to get their head around it and just get everything dialed there. So uh, some awesome advice there and, and tips just to, to start stepping it up. Thank you. And I mean, with that as well, when you pop and you want to get the board above your head, you can pop a lot more with your back foot and really push your back foot up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rather than just doing an ollie and staying flat. Yeah, I want to get out there and play around with it and uh, use your words uh, so, wisely yeah. there as on the water. <laughs> nice. So, um, we ask people to send in a couple of questions, um, just if they've got any for me to fire at you. So I'm going to uh, going to quick fire through these and uh, see what you've got to say about a few of them. Uh, first one from Jay. What does James think about unhooked wave riding? Does he do it? And if so, what's the bar set up, or is the bar set up differently? Um. So, I mean, I haven't unhooked wave riding for a few years, to be honest. It's not my favorite thing, but I know a few guys do like it. And it definitely, if you do it right, it gives you a lot more freedom kind of on the turns and everything. Because a big limit of wave riding with the kite is you have the big, this bar in the middle of you. And you can't really move your, your front hand sometimes, or sometimes your back hand, you can't really move. So if you unhook, you can move a lot more. Mm -hmm. But um, if I was going to do it, I would probably ride my kite pretty deep powered because um, you get really powered up unhooked. And um, on the Neos, let's say I would ride the low the low power setting and and a couple of points deep powered. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, nice. I think yeah, it was such a big, it was such a big can. thing like ten years ago. Everyone was. Uh, even in the bay, everyone yeah. was trying to catch little bay runners unhooked and ripped around, but I haven't yeah. seen it for ages now. Oh, but I mean, if, you, if you're in the waves and you, you have a kite that isn't a wave kite and you unhook, it's, it's fine. Like, if you unhook, you get a lot more drift out of your kite. Mm. So I think, I think 10 years ago when the kites couldn't do what they can now, <laughs> it made a lot more sense. Yeah. Nice. Uh, now, another Facebook question from David. Uh, do you prefer a slider rope on the spreader bar or a loose harness with a fixed hook and why? Um, so I ride the, a, a pretty loose harness with a fixed hook. Um, I like my, my harness loose so it twists like a slider, but I rather my hook over the slider because I really like to feel the bar pressure and, and feel the kite pulling from the same spot. Um, I don't like the feeling of it sliding too much. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit loose and dangly. It, it doesn't really agree with me. I really like to feel the kite, and I, I like a really power, powered setup. Yeah. And also for strapless freestyle, the hook is is much better for me. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Uh, now I feel like there's probably a little bit of background behind this one that I may have missed, but I'll just read it as is in the interest of reading the questions. Uh, this one's from Jordan. <laughs> Uh, Jordan asks, can the new hybrid SLF surfboard be used to paddle into waves for foil surfing for days when there's not much wind around? 
I imagine it can. Uh, the bigger version, I would say you definitely can. Um, but I'm not too sure. I've never seen it done. Why don't, why don't you get it done? And I just figured it, that you is. must have been paddling in on this thing at some stage and Jordan was just like, just bringing it back. I mean, I'm not, I'm not super into surf oil. I've, I've done it a few times, but um, I'm not sure. I've never even ridden the hybrid, to be honest. All right. But I'm sure the bigger one, you can definitely paddle. <laughs> nice one. All right. Um, now, a couple of Instagram questions. Uh, these first three, great questions here from Luca. Um, first one. Now, I think Luca is a young bloke absolutely ripping and uh, after some, you know, some next step advice. So his uh, first question, did you complete school? And if so, how did you balance school with kiting and competitions? Oh, good question. <laughs> I think I've seen Luca on Facebook last couple of days riding a, a smoke board. I think that's the one. Possibly. It's ripping. Good to see. Um, but yeah, so school was, school was a bit hard, to be honest. Um, teachers didn't really like me. I was never there. But <laughs> if I had a competition to go, I had to go. It didn't matter what was happening. I had to go because um, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I needed to go. It wasn't an option, but it was important for me to finish school. So I did finish school. Um, and when I was away, I studied like crazy. And I'll be on the plane studying all the time. Um, but I mean, I didn't leave, I didn't leave too much. There's not a competition every week. You know, there's, there's a competition, not, not even once a month, really. So I left to go to my can competition. I, can I then, rephrase that part? Let's say competition or like double overhead at Bells. Sorry. Yeah, true. <laughs> that too. Big waves on the weekend as well, on a Friday. That's fine. It's just fair Friday. enough. Fair enough. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I left school a lot, but um, I always caught up and, and I always studied. So if you're going to leave, you got to catch up. That's it. Nice one. And uh, another one from Luca. How did you get your first sponsors? My first sponsors? Um, I don't really know the full story, to be honest, but it was a little shop, a shop called RPS. Um, I think my dad might have been friends with them and, and kind of through a few, few people, they saw me kiting and everything else. Um, but I think the best way these days to get sponsors is just to go to the events, really right around the events. <laughs> Um, stay close to the shops because shops are your best friends when you're starting. Um, shops are definitely going to help you out. They're going to give you the contacts you need. And um, I definitely got my first big sponsor through the shops. So I got in contact with what was North Skyboarding is now Duotone through the shops. Um, and yeah, so I think really they're, they're, the, they're the best way to go. Especially KR, they're huge. <laughs> Uh, and final one from Luca. And before I even ask it, I'm going to say, Luca, we will be hounding him as soon as he's back to organise this. Yeah. Year. But I'll ask, I'll ask James anyway. Uh, will you hold a strapless training session in Melbourne? Yes, Please. of course. If I'm back and you want a, a tra strapless session, just let me know. But nice. No one. idea when I'll be back. It might have to uh, awesome. And the final question, which I may have slightly modified from an unknown source. Who's the bigger frother? You or your old man? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I think it's my old man. <laughs> I think it's my old man. <laughs> gotta say, gotta love the, uh, love the stokey spreads around the beaches. So... Sean, I'm sure you'll listen at some point. Keep it up, mate. <laughs> and uh, guys, just wanted to say a massive thank you on everyone who sent in questions for halves and everyone that'll watch this. James, thank you very much for, uh, for jumping online, waking up at before sunrise, I think you said it was, yeah. and, uh, and uh, listening. No worries. We wish you the best of luck for uh, whatever the rest of this season brings and, uh, and obviously the season ahead. And we can't wait to see you back here, mate. Well, thank you, mate. I appreciate the talk and um, I hope you guys can really get outside and do what you want. Now you can go 25 kilometres. It, it would be great. We, we do too. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I'd be going crazy.
<laughs> so, um, guys, we'll have a few product videos coming out with James shortly as well. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Get some more great info. And uh, if you missed that midsection of this one, make sure you get into that tips and tricks bit. It'll help heaps. Thank you very much, James. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Sweet.